Katie, just before the break, we were talking about multiculturalism. And uh, I want to repeat the point that you made earlier, that you believe that the UK hasn't been able to achieve it. What you have is, you know, ghettos of individual cultures Absolutely. rather than, you know, true diversity, the, inter the mixing of various cultures. And yet you also wrote in your book, and you made that point over and over again in many of your interviews, that you wouldn't let your kids play with anyone who isn't called Margaret, <laughs> Nigel, Donald, let alone Mohammed. Isn't that the very attitude that fosters cultural ghettos in the first place? Well, this was less of a cultural thing in the sense of um, different ethnic backgrounds. This was my experience from going to a state school in the UK. And you could tell, I, I had this kind of idea as a mom doing the school run, um, you could tell what a kid would be like by its name. And I still stand by that. So there's certain names that I hear, and it would be Tyler, it'll be Destiny, all of these kind of names. But and you, you know also mentioned sort of the, the name Mohammed. Well, Mohammed, if you think about it in the UK, and it's shocking to me, um, the number one name in the UK is Mohammed, the number two name in the UK is Mohammed. Uh, and I find that, from a demographic perspective, it's very frightening that actually by 2050 there'll be more Muslim births in the UK than there will be British births, and I find that actually quite distressing. You know, um, I have a kid who is born to a Muslim father. Sure. Uh, he's four years old. Is he called Mohammed? Uh, he, his name is different, but it it's is... It's not Mohammed. It is a Muslim name. But is it Mohammed? It, it is not Mohammed, but it is a Muslim name. Well and done. I, I wonder... Well, I mean... It, I would have called him Mohammed if... Uh, but then everyone's that... called Mohammed, so how do you know who's your Mohammed? Oh, I think in Russia I would have a lesser problem finding a Mohammed at a playground. Let me ask you a question if you have yeah. a Muslim husband. But uh, first, let me ask you a question. Would you ban your kid from playing with my kid? Because he has a you know, no, Muslim-sounding name. No, as long as he had... I mean, it wasn't really done on names other than I could tell what a kid would be like with their names, but it was about the fact that they were maybe would turn up to school without their homework, they'd turn up without the right uniform, they don't have the manners that I prefer for my children, and I am and quite... And you think uh, Muslim families are not as... It was, never as... about, it was never about Muslim families. It was about the types of families that I met in the school playground and the types of mums mm -hmm. that I wasn't particularly keen on. Whatever we say, we all know the mums that we like and the mums that we don't like. I was just really honest about it. But regardless of whether you were referring to like a British kid or a Muslim kid, uh, isn't that a fundamentally anti-Christian thing to say? Because, mm. uh, you know, you, you talk a I've lot about Christian... I've done many anti-Christian things in my life. I, I am not a good ambassador for the Christian and religion, and I see that. And you talk a lot about uh, Christian values as yeah. underpinning the... Yeah, no, the, I, I'm just criticising myself, society. because, like, if you see any of the stuff that I've done, I, I mean, I think many Christians would want to distance themselves from me entirely. Where because when you have Muslim a kid... Uh, practice, well, Kate, tell me. When you have a kid... Uh, mm -hmm on your hands, mm -hmm. you try to find any refuge. R literally, you would go across the med Mediterranean even if you don't know how to swim. You would do anything possible for your two-year-old But we don't see any women and children on the boats we, we across do the Med. See. We do see, but two. even though I would agree that they, uh, primarily it is 620 males. something on the Aquarius, 11 children. We don't see many women and children, I promise you. Well, They're I, left I, behind. I, I, I've reported extensively from the ground, both in Libya and in Syria, so believe me, I also I, I think you could afford me some credibility, and there are I'm not women and children, credibility. children in desperate conditions, but it is more difficult for them to move around, that's for sure. Now, um, I followed you long enough to conclude that there are some issues that are very close to your heart that I think you believe in passionately, and yet there are those things that you seem to be throw out there, uh, out there for controversy, to simply propel your argument. Can you yourself tell one from the other? Uh, I think it's trite to imagine uh, that I say things just to be controversial. Um, you would not withstand uh, the level of attacks, of police harassment, of detention, of having my passport taken, of social services being called on my children, um, of my family being under threat, of having two jihadis plot to behead me in November 2017. I don't believe you would withstand those levels of people try, trying to silence you if you didn't believe what you said. And, and that may convince you or not, I'm not seeking to. I'm only trying to give uh, people an understanding of what it's like to try and speak freely and openly with my views, which are known for being very strong. So you would have to really question yourself, why would I do this if I didn't really believe what I say? And I believe my country can be better. I believe in Donald Trump and I believe Japan 
Russia and America are going to be the three leaders that fight back against the globalists. So that's my kind of part of my enthusiasm for Putin here as well. You mentioned uh, the silencing of dissenting views, yeah. and uh, I totally hear you. I personally have been looked into by Ofcom a couple of times, uh, but. They're paper shuffles. I, I would at least agree with you that there, there, there is a political censorship, pro-liberal political censorship going on in, in a number of Western countries. But when I hear certain views, again, postulating that children could be mistreated because of their names... Uh, that's, that's, that's not, that is not a fair summary of what I've said at well, all. But because at all. No, no, that is not a fair summary of what I've said. I said I wouldn't invite certain children to my house if they had a certain name. You know that is not mistreatment. I, 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 I don't no, know no, if you know how fe feeling uh, rejected, you know, feeling rejected is a, is pretty painful for a child. I can tell you from my own experience. I'm pretty sure you had that experience yourself in your life. So when you say that certain children are not to be engaged, certain families are to be looked down to, and you know, you're you laboring that point. To be fair, what do you mean? There's plenty of other arguments we could have apart from a child children's name debate. Okay. I had about 12 anyway, years Anyway, when you raise an issue like that, uh, some people may indeed support the argument for a certain degree of censorship. Don't you think that by laying out something as controversial as we've just uh, discussed, you actually provide a motive, I a think, justification I think really, for curtailing I think the genuine political I debate? I think you're laboring a really facile point. I think the reason I have so much support, the reason I have uh, close to a million followers on Twitter, the reason the articles I put up are most read and most viewed is because people identify with the things I'm saying, because what we no longer have in this society are people that will tell the truth to power. And I'm not at all frightened of that. I'm not at all frightened of, of saying, we need my country back. We should not be bowing down to people who choose but to join us. there is a difference. Those things there really matter. There is a difference uh, about, uh, between criticizing your government on irresponsible migration policies. And I criticize and, other parents. And talking about children. No, I criticize <laughs> you know, parents. There's a, the difference there's not. between discussing there's not. children's Some names parents and... don't deserve to be parents. They, don't, they aren't good enough parents. That's, that's also but perfectly how... true. You're just taking offence on behalf of other people. Many people agree with me and disagree with you. That's also OK. It's, uh, we can be relaxed about that. Yeah, but I don't understand why do you have to... Because you are, are very, very, very passionate. Why do you have to mix those you know, very because substantive I'm points? And the, I'm a mother, you know, I'm insult. a wife, I'm a pretty poor Christian, I'm a traveller, I'm an anti-immigrant kind of personality, I believe in politics. I'm many things. I'm not just a kind of person that sits in front of a camera. A big part of who I am is a mum. And there's certain mums who don't really deserve to be mums because they don't bring their children up properly. Since our time is running out, I, I do want to ask you one more question about censorship. Um, I know that you are very uh, concerned about uh, the Tommy Robinson case, uh, a very swift sentencing and jailing of a person for the reporting on a politically sensitive case in defiance of a court order and majority from, Pakistani Muslim from what I know the British system has a long tradition of legal precedent uh, do you fear that you yourself with the views that you hold may find yourself in, in a similar legal situation uh, I imagine I probably am top of the list now for being imprisoned for my views. Um, and what concerns me about Tommy Robinson not, people will say, well, he was contempt of court, he shouldn't have been reporting now. I understand all that. I think the two key questions are, where was the swift justice for the majority Pakistani Muslim paedophile gangs when Tommy Robinson was sentenced in five hours to 13 months? Mm -hmm. And secondly, I see it very much, you have the Scripple case here, mm -hmm. or there was an... A, Putin was alleged to have poisoned individuals on UK soil. I don't see any difference between the Scripple case with Putin and what our government has done to Tommy Robinson. They've put him in prison. He will not survive in prison. One guard let the Muslim gangs into his cell. He's done. So I think the British government is no better than Putin in any regard because it silences political people that it doesn't like to hear just in the same way that it's alleged that Putin did. And so we are no better than Russia. If uh, you're concerned that you may be next, is that, go is that going to change the way you... No, not at all. Not at work? all. If I'm imprisoned for my views, then it seems to me it's not uh, the truth teller that will be in the wrong. It will be the authority. And I would hope uh, that there will be a new legion of other uh, outspoken individuals like myself that will come and fill my shoes. And I will write a new book, I guess, at Rude Behind Bars.
Well, Kathy, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time. And Thank you. I encourage our viewers to keep this conversation going on our social media pages. As for me, hope to see you again, same place, same time, here on Worlds Apart.